Hello, and welcome to a Dyson Sphere program video. Today we're going to be talking specifically about the Dyson Sphere and Dyson Swarms themselves. We're going to be talking about how the menus work, what the researches are, and all that good stuff. I am going to be adding chapters because each of these components happen at different parts in your playthrough, but we're going to have everything you need all in one spot. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So, in your research menu, you're going to start with Solar Sail Orbit System. This is going to unlock the EM Rail Ejector and the Solar Sail. What you're going to be doing with these is you're going to be producing a constant stream of Solar Sails, which go into the Rail Ejectors, and they're going to create your Dyson Swarm. From that Dyson Swarm, it's going to collect energy from the sun, and you're going to collect that energy with ray receivers. And then after we unlock ray receivers, it's going to probably take a little bit of a break from the, from the sphere and the swarm. And we're going to go to the vertical launching silo. So here you're going to need rockets, a constant stream of rockets going into the vertical launch silo and this will create your Dyson Sphere. You'll also need a couple of these researches, the Dyson Sphere stress system. You're going to only be able to start with a like, strip around uh, the equator of the sun and then as you unlock more of this you're gonna unlock uh, more latitude so you can build your sphere you know, bigger and bigger. There are also some upgrades in the upgrade menu that are important. Solar sail life is important because when you launch a solar sail into a Dyson Swarm, it's going to have a life. It's going to deteriorate over time. So as you upgrade this, your solar sails are going to last longer and longer. The reason that you want to make a Dyson Sphere is because the spheres don't break down. So you're going to start off with a swarm, it's going to have a life, um, and you're going to need a constant stream of sails. And then when you make the sphere, it's going to be a more permanent structure. Also, another important upgrade is ray transmission efficiency. So this is going to make your ray receivers receive energy more efficiently. So another good thing to upgrade. So, now we're going to talk about our Dyson Swarm. So for the Dyson Swarm, you're going to need a constant supply of solar sails. They require graphene and photon combiners. And you're also going to need to feed these into EM rail ejectors. And you're going to need your EM rail ejector to be set to a orbit. So, if I set it to none, it's not really going to do much. If I set it to this one, it's going to start launching at this predetermined orbit. You can access the orbit menu by clicking Dyson Sphere or by clicking on here and clicking Edit Orbit. And you can see I have two other ones set up. So this first one is kind of basic, so I added two more. If you want to add more, you can add up to 20. If you want to have a lot of different swarms happening for a nice cool effect but if you just click add orbit you get this little menu where you can change the radius change the inclination change the latitude this is pretty much cosmetic only so just figure out something that looks cool so long as you have these certain number of sails that's going to determine how much power you can draw from your swarm. Also as a reminder, solar sails have a lifespan, so you're going to want to keep a constant supply of solar sails if you continue to use a Dyson Swarm. When you make a Dyson Sphere later on, which I'll get to in a minute, that is going to be a more permanent structure which will, you know, you won't have to replenish. Which is nice. And that's pretty much it for how the sphere or the swarm is set up. 
So let's talk about how we draw power from our swarm. So in order to draw power from your Dyson Swarm or Dyson Sphere, you're going to need array receivers. Okay. And I just upgraded the efficiency. How great is that? There are actually two settings for the ray receiver. Photon generation you're going to talk about a little bit later. But power generation is going to be what you're going to do first. Uh, something important to note about the ray receivers is that they receive a bonus for continuous receiving. Continuously receiving rays will increase the max output and efficiency, and progress will drop if no ray is received. So, the ray receivers are constantly getting energy from the, from the swarm or sphere. They're going to get a bonus. So, it makes it very good to put ray receivers on both poles of your planet due to your tilt at both poles you can kind of think of it like living in Alaska you get six months of the year or half the year I guess um, because I guess we don't use Earth years here <laughs> uh, half the year it's going to be facing the Sun and then half the year it's gonna be facing away from the Sun so you're gonna to want to have ray receivers on both poles that way you get that bonus and the bonus is pretty substantial so you're definitely gonna want to get that bonus for that max efficiency so I'm, I'm gonna jump to a different save file that's a little bit further along and then we can talk about the Dyson sphere so I've moved on to a different save that's a little bit further along and we're gonna talk about how to make a Dyson sphere so for the Dyson Sphere, you need a constant supply of these rockets, which are pretty complicated to make. They need the sphere components, Deuteron fuel rods, and the quantum chips that we make for green science. Also, you're going to need to feed these into these rocket silos, and that's what's going to launch them into orbit of your star. So we're going to need to open our editor in order to set up our sphere. So in the editor menu, we have, in addition to our Dyson Swarm options we had before, we now have a Dyson Shell option. We can take a look at our current shell and some statistics over here. Up here we have power generation, which was similar to the Swarm. But we also can see how many structure points and cell points we need. So we can see that this sphere has fulfilled all the structure points that it needs and it just needs more solar sails to fill out the shell portions. But we want to make another sphere, right? You can have up to 10 different layers doing all sorts of crazy things. So let's go ahead and add a new layer. This menu is very similar to what we saw with the Dyson Swarm. We can change the orbit radius, inclination, longitude, latitude, all that good stuff. So let's just make another one at zero. And let's make it a little, let's make it bigger. We can create. So now we're going to have to set up the frame first. So we have this option down here and we have a geodesic or a graticule frame. The graticule kind of hugs the longitude and latitude lines a little bit more than when compared to the geodesic. So you can see it kind of deviates there where the graticule doesn't really. So I kind of like the graticule, but you can do whatever you want. Also, you can change the grid type. So we could do free form if you're an anarchist. We can do a, a square type form. And then a couple of these this is, I guess this is a pentagon form, um, like a diamond shape and a triangle shape. They all allow you to do different types of shapes uh, depending on what you want. But to keep it simple, I like doing the, I like doing the square because I like writing silly things on my spheres. So once you have the frame set up, what you're gonna do is you're gonna color this in with the uh, the shell option. So once I have like a box or a, any any 
shape, <laughs> any shape you desire. Uh, we can color it in, and this will start requesting uh, solar sails to be delivered here. You can kind of see the, this process in motion with the sphere that I already have because it does take a while. The frame does have to be built before the uh, sails start really going in. And we can see our options over here, or our statistics over here. So I need 1200 rockets, we're delivering, you know, 19, constructing, and then the cell points that are required. We also have a dismantle all option, and we also have blueprint options, so you can, if there's a blue, if there's a shell that you make that's super cool that you want to add and save, you can select copy selected layer, copy all layers, or copy literally everything. This will copy the swarm orbits, the sphere layers, and you can use it in different fi save files even. So if you have like a, you know, a signature phrase or something, you know, you can, uh, you can save that up. And that's pretty much everything on how to make the, the spheres. I do have uh, one more comment on the ray receivers. Uh, that we'll get to right now. So as I mentioned before, the ray receivers, they have two different settings, power generation and photon generation. Uh, what I have up here is it's I kind of do a mix of the two. I have a bunch doing power generation and then a bunch doing the photon generation. When you have them do photon generation, you need a belt coming out and that will have your photons. I guess I'm not using my photons enough which is <laughs> pretty interesting. Uh, maybe I don't have vessels in here. Anyway. But they're still going to get this continuous receiving bonus. You can also feed them Gravitron lenses, which will get you more, uh, more photons. Um, it's not something that I necessarily do, but if you want to do it, go for it. I hate making Gravitron lenses. I make enough for Warpers and Green Science, so it's not something that I do, but it is something that you can do if you like. And the photons are important because they are required to make uh, the antimatter. So if we go in here, antimatter. Antimatter is required for photons, and then antimatter is also required for um, the white science. So for the white science, you need one, two, three, four, five of the sciences, and then you also need the antimatter. So you're required to make these in order to get to the end game. So that's everything you need to know about making a Dyson Sphere. If you found this video guide helpful, be sure to subscribe. I plan on making many more of these in the future. Also, I live stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash billythedoor. I'd love to see you come hang. And with that, that's all for me. Take care.